Influencers in China have to stick to a very specific set of rules. So what has happened to China's rural fairy princess, Li Zixi? I don't do drama. That's not what this channel's about. I'm not interested in uh, talking smack about other YouTubers. If I ever do that, it's simply because I'm talking about something the CCP is doing. So yes, I do occasionally talk about the propagandists who you find on YouTube who work for the Chinese state media and uh, the Chinese government. And well, Li Zixi is no different really. I've made a video about her before. And before I get attacked by a million different people who are fully in love with this woman, I have to say that I appreciate what she does. Let's get that out the way. I know what she's doing. I know the amount of effort that goes into it. She's got a big team that does all the videography for her. Everything is set up. It's all staged. That isn't what real rural China is like. It's an idyllic vision of what rural China could be like, or more accurately, what it was prior to, you know, the Communist Party and prior to all the big changes China went through. But that's not what this is all about. I'm sure you want to know what happened to Li Zixi. So what actually happened to Li Zixi? Well, it's pretty straightforward. For those of you who are still under this impression that she's just a rural farm girl who lives with her grandmother in some kind of rural thing, please realize that she's a multi-millionaire. Her social media empire is massive. Perhaps you see her on YouTube. And yes, her YouTube channel is huge. In fact, it's uh, the Guinness World Book record for, you know, the most uh, subscribers for a Chinese language channel. Although I find this a little bit disingenuous since there is no dialogue and all the titles are actually bilingual. So let's just say the most subscribed Chinese creator. But, you know, that brings in a lot of money. Uh, you know, it could be anywhere, but I'm guessing it's at least upwards of $100,000, $200,000 a month that she's making on her channel. It's a lot of money, but that's not where most of her uh, money comes from. Of course, she has a huge social media empire in China on the Chinese social media. And more importantly, she has shops set up on Tmall, which is kind of like the high-end eBay of China, where they sell her... Um, what is it again? River, snail, rice noodles, luosifin. It's kind of like a, they sell these instant noodles. And this is the part that really gets me about this, um, is that she sells a, an idea of this idyllic, rural, pure country life. But everybody's clamoring to buy her factory-made instant noodle brand. It's kind of a funny juxtaposition there. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that makes huge amounts of money. I think it made somewhere close to 31 million US dollars in the first uh, quarter, um, you know, of this year. The fact of the matter is uh, her social media empire is making money hand over fist by selling a fantasy. There's nothing wrong with this. It's the same when we go to watch a movie, when we go to watch a movie about, I don't know, sci-fi or some fantasy thing. Those actors aren't real wizards or spacemen or whatever the hell they are. Of course not. But we love the fantasy and that's why we go watch it. And that's why actors are paid a lot of money. Li Zixi is no different. So I harbor no ill will towards Li Zixi. I'm just trying to explain to you that you have to snap out of your little ideas. If you, if you still for some reason thought that she's just a, a lowly country girl, you know, living a simple life. She certainly is not. She's very, very rich. Probably richer than your government. But no, all jokes aside, she's having a big dispute with her content manager who kind of, you know, runs her merchandise thing and takes care of various parts of her business and, of course, has a, a, a majority share, actually, in her entire social media company. I'm sure she's kind of annoyed that they're taking advantage of her and she's not getting the proceeds considering the entire brand is built around her as a person, so I understand, and so she's taking them to court and there's all that kind of nonsense getting in the way. But there's something else going on here, and that is the Chinese government. You see, it was quite a long time ago that the Chinese government actually co-opted her as a useful tool of propaganda for the Chinese government, okay? Because let's be honest here. When it comes to propaganda, the Chinese government sucks, okay? You see, we on the dark side of the moon, on hardness of soft like carbon dioxide in the ooze, joy of at least outward propaganda. Within the country, they're pretty effective. What they say people listen to and believe for the most part. 
But when they try to use their same logic and their same methods that they use on the local populace abroad, in other words, uh, for you and me, it usually comes out being a little less um, effective and a little more hilarious, cringeworthy, or just outright insulting. For slaves, they're no weavers. By taking flight, he's truer. For families, are getting fewer. Another name for this cliff is colluser. I see something funny, can I talk to seven for such a plantation's money? I saw forced laborers working so poorly, just like we're imagining. Bounce, you know what it is, but choose the last thing you wanna say, but only one. You just can't face all the arrogance. It's empty beliefs, no fear for future. I listen to this to a radical cure. I see truth. That's what I mean, so real, no fake. Welcome to my space. I see dry and then such a made card. So when they noticed the amount of attention that Lisa Chi was getting from her videos abroad, they realized that she could be a very valuable tool as a cultural ambassador to show the beauty of Chinese culture and history and to get people interested in China, which of course is what has happened. It's a pity that what she's projecting in her videos is not actually the real China, and I can tell you that from experience myself, having traveled around the rural parts of China, lived in the rural parts of China, explored the rural parts of China, that idyllic lifestyle that she's selling you through her videos is not actually something that exists, and to be honest, is something that the Chinese government has been for years trying to get rid of. In other words, trying to urbanize, move everyone out of the countryside. It's been a... it's... It's a funny thing. It's as if this fell on the lap of the CCP and they said, well, you know what? This is working really well. So let's use this and utilize this. And that's what they did. So, you know, she has been co-opted as a shining star of Chinese propaganda and soft power abroad. Is there a problem with this kind of approach, soft power? Uh, personally, I think no, nothing wrong with it. Hollywood movies are the same thing for America. I grew up not in America, watching all these American movies like The Goonies and, uh, you know, Back to the Future and all of these kind of things. And, and growing up, I thought America was amazing from the movies that I saw living in South Africa. And it made me want to always go to visit or live in America, which, of course, I do now. And probably in large part due to all the influence I got from American soft power. Music, all the top pops, top of the pops, all the kind of music you used to hear usually came out of America or the UK or, you know, but mainly America. So I'd be listening to American music, watching American movies. And of course, that would change my mind towards thinking that America is a fantastic place and a place that I would want to go. And so this idea of what Lisa Chi is doing is the same thing. Showing people, look how beautiful the Chinese countryside is and, and all these amazing techniques for cooking these great meals and to, I don't know, weave a, uh, a toupee out of a, a leaf or whatever it is. All these things that she does looks very appealing. And that's what soft power is. It changes people's minds. It makes people like a place, makes people want interested in a place, makes people admire a place. The only difference is that uh, when I was growing up watching, you know, all these movies about America... Um, and Knight Rider and whatever else that I used to watch that would show you the, the things people would do in the way of life in America. For the most part, except for all the fantastical crap, you know, of course there aren't flying cars or anything like that, but uh, for the most part, it kind of checks out. When I came to America, what I grew up watching is what I observe in real life. You know, Halloween happens and you see all the kids dressing up and it's just like in the movies, you know, that kind of thing. Difference is in China... If you were to go there to try and find what Lita Chi is portraying in her videos, you would not find it. So it's kind of a false, it's a falsehood. But again, what happened to her? So after having this dispute, which is still ongoing, she's obviously taking a break. And I think it's a form of protest for her to say, listen, if you're going to, you know, make all this, these millions and millions of dollars every month, just off of my image and off of me, I should be getting more of that. Um, and again, isn't that a bit of a juxtaposition? She's selling a very rural, pure country living, get away from the city kind of image. But at the same time, it all boils down to capitalism, making money and, uh, you know, that whole thing. And it's, it's again, it just shows you that at the end of the day, uh, fantasy is a fantasy, reality is a reality. And, you know, I, I don't hold anything against her. The thing is, she has reappeared recently and uh, done a couple of interviews. And what she's saying in these interviews is what's really tipped me off to what's going on. I'm going to quote some of the things that she said in her interview here quickly. During uh, her CCTV interview, the host asked her about her plans for the future. And she said she wanted to do work related to rural revitalization and common prosperity. 
and guide youth away from becoming influencers toward a path of positive energy. I mean, look, these things that she's saying is exactly the current propaganda coming out of the central government right now in China. This common prosperity thing, that's Xi Jinping's poster child. That's what he wants everyone to parrot. And, you know, the fact that she says she's going to guide youth away from becoming influencers. Again, we've seen how the central government has cracked down on celebrities and uh, fan clubs and the worship of celebrities and things like that. We've seen this. It's pretty straightforward what they want. They don't want this to happen anymore. So I'm seeing here a shift. She's obviously been given kind of an ultimatum here by the government, or she's just by herself realized that if she doesn't go down this path, it's going to mean the end for what she's doing anyway. So we've got a bit of a two-pronged attack going on here. We've got her and her lawsuit against her uh, management company, which, let's be fair, she probably was screwed over in her contracts. This is something I've seen Multiple times in China, it's happened to me before, and it's a really crappy thing to happen, especially since the entire brand is built around her. But then again, you know, they do do all her logistics and things like that and set up all her other stuff. So who knows? That's an internal thing for her to go and decide with her MCN, so to speak. Um, now, when it comes to the government, this is the more serious side of things, and I think this has probably had the most influence on her and the reason why she's kind of taking a break. And that is because of the Chinese government's disapproval and attack against influential individuals in China. You know, it's it's a weird situation, guys, because people like Li Zixi and you name it, any Chinese influencer that you can think of, they're allowed to just with an email address come and create an Instagram profile, they can create a Facebook account, they can create a YouTube account, and they can go and do and say whatever they like. But if you as an influencer wanted to go and uh, sign up for Billy Billy, for instance, or uh, any of these Yo Dao or any of these Weibo, anything in China, any of these social media, Chinese social media giant platforms, you can't. Okay, go ahead and try. First of all, just creating an account requires an insane amount of effort, including your national ID card, which you don't have. So you probably have an option to put up a copy of your passport or something like that. If you're lucky, if they accept that, then there's a whole bunch of weird questions to answer in Chinese which I've always find, found very strange, kind of like a quiz. But then the rules that you have to abide by are ridiculous. If you as an influencer post an opinion that is not correct and not in line with the censors of the Chinese government, your account gets shut down. It's so stifling and difficult to get into the Chinese social media sphere. However, it's very easy for them to come onto Western social media. That's why you're bombarded all the time by propaganda, basically here on uh, YouTube and on Twitter and Facebook and all this, you can get any number of uh, pretty Chinese girls telling you state propaganda and it's allowed. But you cannot find a pretty Western girl to go onto Chinese social media and spout Western propaganda because it'd be shut down immediately. That's just uh, the, the difference. And that's why you have to understand that being a social media influencer in China, and that includes the big ones like Li Zixi, doesn't matter how big you are in China, if they want to change the way things work there, you will be a target. And I think that's what we're seeing here with Li Zixi. It's been three or four months since she posted anything on her YouTube channel. Who knows what and if she's going to post again, but one thing we can be 100% certain about is that it's going to be completely in line with the Chinese government propaganda of the day. You know, I personally met uh, online influencers in China. Uh, I met people that do streaming, live streaming for a living. In fact, it's part of my one documentary, uh, Stay Awesome China. I went to this kind of bizarre, almost like a dollhouse where they had this setup with all these rooms and the, the, the girls would sleep in the house and then come down and do very long live streams for hours on end and take shifts and then the one would go to sleep the other one would come and sit there and do the live streams where they sing and talk and do all this stuff basically like a farm to earn money it was it's kind of dystopian in in so many ways um and i understand the plight of the influences in china and the live streamers and stuff it's it's not all fun and games and it's a it's a tough thing to talk about it's a tough thing to be a part of so i do have sympathy for everyone who's involved but i can tell you one thing uh lisa chi being a multi-millionaire billionaire whatever she is i'm quite sure she'll be all right so for those of you who are worried about it don't worry she hasn't been disappeared she's doing interviews on tv 
she's probably going to be focusing more along the lines of what the government wants her to do now. And unfortunately, I think this is something that happens to every influencer in China. The bigger you get, the more recognition you get, the more on the radar of the government you become, and the more they co-opt you to do what they want you to do. And so you end up kind of losing your original um, flair and your drive and what it is you set out to do in the first place and kind of just end up becoming a tool of the CCP. Anyway, guys, until next time, unlike state propaganda from the Chinese government, <laughs> stay awesome. <laughs>